These protected clear waters of the Andaman Sea are a treasured part of Thailand. Now imagine these waters full of shipping vessels from right across the world. It's a future that locals and the government alike are considering. Depending on who you ask, it could be a great opportunity or a horrible risk. It's dusk on Koh Chang in Renong province in southern Thailand. This isn't an island that attracts hordes of tourists. Not that it couldn't, it clearly has all of the natural attributes. But development has been slow here. The roads are poor, there isn't even electricity. It's fairly remote, an hour by speedboat from the mainland. But its location is important. Soon, Koh Chang could be within the footprint of a potential mega project. I'm talking about the Thailand Land Bridge Project. It's being proposed right now by the national government. It would stretch between two provinces, Renong and Chumphon, across the Kra Isthmus, the narrowest part of the Malay Peninsula. What would that include? 90 kilometers of highways, railroads, oil and gas pipelines, industrial towns and shipping container terminals. The objective reroute some of the region's shipping trade away from the busy Malacca Strait. The land bridge could possibly save a few days of sailing time. Ships would be unloaded at a new deep sea port in Renong, the cargo trafficked across land onto waiting vessels on the other side at another new port in Chumphon. Will it ever be built? Thais have been hearing about similar kinds of projects to this for hundreds of years. Will it be different this time? I decided to travel the expanse of this proposed project to understand the environment, to see the landscape, and to talk to local people about their thoughts about potentially having this mega project right at their doorstep. This is Tom Sinsuan, a fisherwoman who lives by the Andaman Sea. She was all over the Thai news recently for this encounter with Prime Minister Seta Tawisin. She pleaded with him to please stop the land bridge from happening. About a week before this, I met with Tom at her home among a mangrove forest in Renong. She's lived as part of this small fishing community for about 30 years. The people here make this journey down towards Ao Ang Bay every day. It's the proposed location for Ranong's deep sea port. The 64-year-old is scared about the project and what it will mean for her and her people. Tom and her fellow villagers are vulnerable if they're forced to move from this place. They're considered displaced, they don't have national ID cards and therefore have problems when it comes to land ownership and formal employment. Beyond their concerns, adjoining this area is one of the region's most important mangrove ecosystems. It's called the Renong Biosphere Reserve. The 
Now this area is critical for marine biodiversity and is an important carbon sink. It's also only a few kilometers away from the land bridge zone. But other experts are more worried. They say there could be future risks of oil spills and heavy metals contaminating the area. While there's fear and uncertainty here, about 40 kilometers north in Renong town, business interests are lining up to support the project. The old port in Renong is a vibrant place. The seafood trade is big here. There are lots of boats from neighboring Myanmar, which is really close. It's a melting pot of culture, but there's very little modern infrastructure. Industries like mining and forestry used to dominate here, but they're long gone. Renong has become an economic backwater. It's why the Renong Tourism Association president thinks the land bridge can stimulate growth and attract people to this part of southern Thailand. จากอ่าจากส่วนตัวผมเนี่ยผมเห็นด้วยอยู่แล้วว่าผมว่ามันการพัฒนาเรื่องเพราะเราเรามีอาชีพมาหลายอาชีพเราตอนนี้มันหม
unable to earn a living. Since the 17th century, Thai leaders have wanted to dig a canal across this part of the country. Now they've redesigned it, so not to split Thailand into two. The land itself won't be divided, but the people already are.